Hi everyone. Up over my, hopefully my right shoulder here, over my head, you'll see a nice swarm of bees hanging up here in the top of the frame. And today I'm gonna get to demonstrate for the first time in almost two years, uh, my scoop and score bucket that uh, Ricky Gray's come up with. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about it before I make the catch. I think this is a great safety tool. It allows me to catch swarms easily, especially on limbs like that, upwards of 25 foot off the ground. I was six one, and uh, I could reach on up pretty good with it. I got a request a while back to show a close up and talk more about how this is made. So I'm gonna try to do that now. So essentially this is just a office garbage can. It's made of metal mesh, real cheap. Uh, this one was, as you can see here, well I've had this one for several years. It come from big lots for $4, but I'm sure they're more than that now. But all that he done to make this, and he made this one for me back when we tried it. So it's also fairly durable if you don't get crazy with it. But this is a paint handle. And we broke, he broke the ends off here and here and bent it around to conform to the garbage can. And then we, he used Gorilla Tape in two places to secure it to the can. And it works really well. So right here is the important part where the yellow handle there, which extends out to 23 feet. Uh, where it screws into the handle. It's really important that you reinforce that area. And the way I, do, I did that, I took some Gorilla Tape and ripped it in half and double wrapped it around there. And then I put a water clamp on top of that. Uh, if you don't do that, your handle is gonna break about the second or third time you pop a limb with it. Since I've added this to this handle, it's not broken. I've caught at least 50 to 75 swarms with it so it makes it much more durable so this is my first swarm of the year so uh got my stuff on got my hive here ready i got foundation uh i kind of debated a little bit but i think we got a decent nectar flow i got foundation with about three or four frames that had just a touch of comb built on it so i'm gonna put them in that that's a good size swarm and see if we can get some new combs drawn out and that that's what i try to do with swarms especially good swarms is getting new combs drawn out. Uh, especially with mediums, it'll help you get more honey supers. So right here before I go ahead and catch the swarm, I'll give you a couple more pointers about swarms. If you don't know how long the swarm's been up there, this one's been up there about 30 minutes. Uh, when you get to a place, I recommend you get on the ball and try to capture them immediately. Uh, in the past, I've gotten to places and while trying to get my stuff out, the swarm will come off the limb and leave while I'm in the act of getting ready. So the, top, the clock is ticking when that swarm comes out there. They probably well on their way to having a new site selected. So I've seen swarms stay as little as 30 minutes and as much as permanently. Uh, on average, probably about a day, day and a half. I, even a time or two, uh, back when I was a kid, I've seen in my grandfather's yard, I've seen swarms come out and leave and never settle. So. Uh, just remember the clock is ticking when you get to a swarm. So I'm gonna zoom in right there and talk about it just a second. Uh, if you get to a site and the bees don't look quite like this, those bees are relatively calm. You probably got some time, but if you get there and, and you see several bees running about over the swarm, uh, kind of nervous looking, they're, they're trying to generate heat to get ready to depart. So if you see that, you probably have less than five to 10 minutes to knock them down and, and then it's still no guarantee and they come out of that hive right there and you see i got the gray medium on the bottom board back about six or eight weeks ago all the brood nest was contained with there and i reversed it so it just goes to show you how a small colony like that can especially if they got a good queen they can recover and issue a swarm like this so here's my setup for the day. The swarm is about 12 feet off the ground, way out on a flimsy limb of this water oak tree. It's going to, it should be a pretty textbook easy catch. And uh, if I didn't have the scoop and score, it would, be more, it would be more of a challenge to catch this swarm. In the past, I would just simply bang the limb and knock them to the ground and try to catch them. And it's, it's hard on the bees and difficult. If I can touch them with the scoop and score bucket, about 95% of the time that I'm gonna catch them. So here's what I'll be working with today. My scoop and score bucket with extension pole, brand new wax dipped in frame box and solid bottom board. Foundations, five of which are have just a little bit of comb drawn on it. 
and I have a queen excluder. So to use the scoop and score, it comes in three telescoping sections. You always want to start and keep the pole as big as possible. So you want to start with the bigger end and telescope it out as much as possible before you have to extend the littler part. So I'll only extend this smaller part if absolutely necessary and pretty much uh, I'm going to limit it to about three-fourths of the way out. And if you have to use a lot of this upper section, you're going to need a lot of flimsy limbs or something to, to pivot off of. And if it's up really high, you can kind of pivot off of a limb below the swarm and it'd be kind of like shooting pool, you know, shooting a cue ball on a pool table where you fork them off your fingers. You'll kind of fork them off that limb and kind of do a cue shot on the swarm to knock them in the bucket if they're up really high and the pole's really flimsy. So if they're up really high, you know, if you get them out, the pole's going to be wobbly. So you want to use the hip, let the limbs help you get that swarm down. And one final thing about the scooping score, well, two more things. Two is I'll, I'll try to demonstrate where I can just dump the bees and rack them in there and, and put the bucket back up there and the bees will start settling on the bucket. The bucket is like magic, that wire mesh. But the other thing is it don't matter how calm the bees are in my experience, for some reason, when you knock bees down from that high, they're going to be aggressive a little bit. So I recommend you jack it up, put on gloves. Um, first few times I've done this, I got stung on the legs quite a bit using shorts. So, but once again, even for calling, you know, a lot of times the bees, like if they're a foot off the ground, three foot, you can knock them down, or and they're real gentle. But in my experience, when they're up like this, you have to catch them. For whatever reason, when the bees rain down, they, they get more aggressive for a few minutes. So first, I, I test what length I need. So clearly I'm within range of this lower section, so I'm not gonna have to extend it out any. And these are just the little boxes I have that's kind of in the way. So what I'm gonna try to do is get where the bulk of the bees are and not all of them is going to go in there, but if you get the biggest bulk of where the swarm is the biggest, you have a lot better chance to get the queen in the bucket. So I did a pretty decent job of getting a lot of bees in the bucket. I'm hoping you can see this good. I don't have anybody filming. I'm doing this by myself. But just notice how the bees, they don't just bolt out of the bucket. They're actually crawling around in there and I've got opportunity here to look for the queen. I don't see her. Uh, so far, these bees are really gentle and they've not tried to steam me at all. So I might, I probably could have got away without suiting up near as much. But I'm not going to take that chance. Well, just to demonstrate a little bit, I'm just going to stand the pole here on the ground. I have not dumped any of the bees in the box yet. Normally I would have, but I just want to demonstrate how the bees will go to the bucket. And catching, be catching a swarm in this manner is much much safer and uh, this is the main reason I want to share this with you is to offer you an opportunity to make swarm catching easier uh, <clears throat> yes you can go up on the ladder and get this but when you start getting off the ground your risk of injury is quite a bit more
So I think this is an important safety aspect of beekeeping. I don't know if you can see up there where the swarm originally uh, settled at, but it appears they, they've abandoned that side in favor of my bucket. And this is actually the first time I've ever done it this way, so I'm, I'm, this is fascinating to me as well. I don't know what this extension pole costs now, but when I bought or when it was bought back a few years ago, I think it's about forty-five dollars. But I'm pretty sure for less than a hundred dollars, you can build this setup right here. And uh, when you catch a swarm like this, it pays for itself in one catch. So most of the bees are on the bucket now. So as you can see right here, most of the bees are on the bucket. I've still not dumped it in the hive. Bees are all in the bucket, should be. I can't see down in there, but, but yes they are. You'll not see this with a five gallon bucket. The bees are gonna fly out of the bucket. But they're, my guess is it has to do with the mesh properties of the bucket and the ventilation. They got something to grip to, but the bees will not. Well, I bumped the stick, that was me. But the bees, for whatever reason, they like to come to this bucket. I'm kind of scanning for the queen. It should be a dark queen. But more than likely she's in the bucket. There's literally less than 15 bees up there around that limb where they was originally settled. They're all right here. And once again, I still have not dumped any of the bees in the hive at all. They're all on this bucket. And I'm 10, 12 feet from where the swarm is caught. The bees are coming to the bucket. So most of them's here at the bucket. I'm going to ease over here now and uh, dump these bees in the hive and get them started in. I'm going to dump some in and some at the entrance. I, uh, I think it's important to get some bees fanning at the entrance to bring the bees out here in flight on down to the ground. I notice it brings them down better to do that. If I dump them all in there and there's none on the entrance fanning, it seems like it's harder for the, the flying bees out here to find the colony. So even after dumping the bees out, there's bees still wanting to congregate on the basket, but also over here we got the marks going on, so let's check that out. So this is a really nice swarm of bees. I'm going to 
gently place these frames back in here. There's probably, y'all say it's probably four or five pounds of this swarm. Quite a few of these bees has got pollen on their legs. Just a just a beautiful, gentle swarm of bees. A pleasure to work them. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, I'll be glad to continue having these in my apiary. A few drones in there as well. Interesting, uh, a lot of these flight bees out here are still trying to come to the basket. But if you'll notice how they're kind of running around, a little bit nervous, that indicates there's no queen there. And they'll be abandoning this fairly quickly now that there's no uh, smell of the queen there. Unless she happens to be inside here, which is possible, but I don't see her. There's a little bit runny and stuff in there. I don't think she's in there. I think she's in the box. But that's one of the ways you can tell with a swarm where the queen is, is watch what the bees do. If they're nervous and runny where the swarm site was or in the box. Like these bees all seem to be pretty calm and fanning. That's a real good indication the queen is in the box. So see the difference in the behavior of the bees. They're all fanning and relatively calm. And the same thing in here, they're trying to find her inside the basket. But this wire mesh garbage can is absolutely magic. By far and away the, the best beekeeping hack that I've ever come across. And I can't thank Ricky Grace enough for whatever reason, however he thought of it, just to think to, to make this. And his original intention was to save weight over the five gallon bucket we was using in the one inch aluminum conduit so this is much lighter another thing he does is he carries two or three of these around in his pickup and he has rubber bands big enough to fit around that and he carries some towels and he'll dump a swarm or in you know in one or two of these buckets put the towel over it, the rubber band you know if there's a bunch of bees out uh, the bees will come settle on the outside and he can just fit it in his pickup in the seat of his truck and carry it home and put it in a box. He don't have to haul around equipment. That's something I used to do when I, before I learned the nectar management process, I would have to go around almost every day checking for swarms in my honey production yards. And I would have three or four complete hives in the back of my truck. And uh, this, if I'd known this at that time, this would have made that a lot easier. So it's probably been about five or so minutes since I dumped the bees. They're settling in pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and provide them some darkness here. We've got plenty of bees fanning on the entrance. And I think the bees will be much more comfortable having this dark box instead of the wide open top. So now that'll cause all the bees to start coming in the entrance as designed. So to remove a distraction from these bees, I'm gonna go ahead and bump these down on the ground and put my scoop and score bucket up out of sight. So that's got it iffied out. Those bees are now on the ground, you can see them starting to crawl towards the hive. There was no queen in there. But I'm gonna, like I say, this is a distraction and an attraction to the bees. I'm gonna go ahead and put it up because I got the vast majority in the box. So it's been about 10 minutes since I racked the bees in the box. But there's a limb they settled on. Practically no bee flight up there at all. Just a few stragglers. But they're down here at the box where they belong. So after 10 or 15 more minutes, the bees here are acting satisfied. The queen is here. Then there's still no flight up around with the regional site where the colony settled. So now it's time for me to get prepared to move the colony. So the first thing I want to do is set the top over set the high body over, make sure the queen is not on the bottom board, and set the queen excluder on there, and then set the high back up there, 
and also I've placed my ratchet strap underneath. So I want to look carefully on this bottom board for a second. I don't want to trap the queen under here. I don't see her. I'm also being worried because more than likely this queen would be dark. But I don't see her here, so I'm going to go ahead and put the queen excluder on. And then set my hive back up on top. The colony is secure. 99% probability the queen's in there. And if the bees try to abscond, she can't get out, so they're going to come back. And I've seen that happen a few times. But and once again, I'll wait. Uh, today's Saturday, so I'll check next Saturday, maybe next Sunday. If there's eggs and brood in here, I'll go ahead and take that excluder off. I want to get it off as quick as I can. And if it's a virgin queen, or I suspect it's a virgin queen, I'm going to take it off in seven days anyway so she can make her flights. So with that part done, and I'll secure the box together with the ratchet strap. I've got the colony all buttoned up, my queen excluder's on here, the bees are still happy. The colony's ready to move to its new location. Probably here in the next 30 minutes, I'll pick it up and take it to one of my open stands over there. But uh, just to recap this, this swarm catch, I wanted to demonstrate the safety aspect and how much easier and safer it is to catch swarms with the, uh, that metal mesh bucket. It's pretty inexpensive to build. And I definitely think it's worth it. The first swarm you catch, it's out of reach from the ground it'll pay for itself. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and I want to thank you for taking the time to join me for this swarm catch today and the first time I've got to use my scooping score in almost two years and we'll see you on the next one.